All right, everybody, Dennis Prager here, and I have on the line Senator Jim DeMint, former senator, congressman from South Carolina, now a senior advisor to Citizens for Self-Governance. He teaches the latest uh, PragerU video out today, in fact, no, out yesterday, excuse me, out yesterday already has a million views. How the States Can Save America, it's a very, very powerful message, as usual, in five minutes. Jim DeMint, welcome to the Dennis Prager Show. Good to talk to you. Dennis, it's good to be back with you, and I have to compliment you again on your vision for Prager University, the way you talk to people about complicated issues in clear, simple terms. It's just um, it's been amazing, and when you start partnering with groups like Turning Point that uh, touch a lot of young people, uh, it just it's making a huge difference. So uh, proud to be a small part of it. Well, you're not a small part, and it comes uh, coming from you. It, it means a lot. Thank you so much. You have a very powerful thing, which I hope catches on. Before you give your your suggestion on how the states specifically can save America, as you put it, you have a number of specific items you would like to amend to the Constitution in order to save America. So tell the ends and then tell the means. What are the ends? The ends are basically, Dennis, to restore the original limits on the federal government. Uh, we don't really need a new Constitution. Our Constitution has been changed so many times by court precedent and case law that, uh, um, like the Tenth Amendment, no longer has any relevance in Washington. There are no limits to what the federal government can do. I know I've been there. If they can tell you you have to buy a health insurance plan, they can tell you to do anything. So the idea is to call a convention of states that propose amendments in three areas. The first area is to restrain the federal government fiscally. That means balance the budget. That means things like limit taxation, use general accounting principles. Pretty common sense. The second is to limit the federal government's jurisdiction and authority over the states. Unfunded mandates are a lot of the control of federal lands, education, health care. The things the federal government does that was never, never intended for it to do. The third subject matter area is to limit the terms of federal officials. That includes bureaucrats, judges, congressmen, and senators. All of these will be discussed and debated. We don't know what the convention will come up with, but whatever is recommended by the convention has to be ratified by 38 states. So the chances of something coming out of there that is not consistent with the call for convention are, are really, um, it's, it's impossible for that to happen in this scenario. How many states have a Republican governor? I, I, I mean, I'm putting you on the spot. I don't. Most people don't have an answer to that off the top of their head. But do you happen to know? Well, I know. I think it's 34 states have. A okay. So wait. So that that means. So that means it's possible. What you're what you're recommending is possible. Well, not only with Republicans, Dennis. What we've seen is, if you look at states like California, they don't like what's coming out of Washington now. And if if we can get across to people, this is not a conservative effort to get our way. What It's an effort not to decide what we're going to do, but where it's going to be decided and who is going to decide it. We've got a prominent Democratic sponsor of our bill in Ohio, um, and I think we're going to pick up more Democrats. But you're right. Uh, I know it's 34 state legislatures now are controlled by Republicans And the governors don't have to sign this call for convention. It's just the House and the Senate of the state legislators, uh, legislatures. And uh, that will, uh, if 34 states do it, we'll have a convention. Wow. So, you see, I just want my listeners to know this is feasible. Who who came up with this idea? (laughs) Our founders did. It's in Article 5 of the Constitution. (laughs) Uh, That's right. I really fell into that one. I I, I understand that. Yes. (laughs) They they envisioned, as they knew they were suspicious of government, that the whole argument at at the first Constitutional Convention was how to limit the federal government. And they knew that if the federal government got out of control, ever got out of control, it would not limit itself. 
So they allowed the states the opportunity to come together to propose amendments. And that's all it is. It's not to rewrite the Constitution. Article 5 is about proposing amendments to the Constitution. Congress can do it, and so can the states. Okay, hold on there. This is really, really important. I just want to remind my listeners, only on Earth did one country be found, was one country founded on the principle of limited government. May I just read for uh, the sake of my audience, uh, Senator, the Tenth Amendment. It is not long. It is one sentence. This is the full text of the Tenth Amendment to the United States Constitution. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. So, <laughs> you know, I have to say, I have to say, Senator, that I I can't think of something as wildly violated in America today. I think there is more violation of that than there is jaywalking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of. I mean, it's 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 mind blowing, is it not? It, it, it is. I mean, there's hardly anything that comes up in Washington uh, that is, is actually consistent with the Constitution. Um, the, the budget, is, is we budget and spend money on so many things that were never given to the federal government. Uh, we take so much authority away from the states, such as education, health care. Uh, the education program came with more money from the federal government, and they basically bribed the states. They did the same thing with Medicaid and various welfare programs. But more and more strings and regulations were attached through the years, and now the states realize that with only 10 percent of their education funding coming from the federal government, but about 25 percent of the cost coming from regulations uh, that they're they're losing more than they're gaining, and that many states are donor states when it comes to infrastructure dollars. So more and more in the last few years, you've seen states begin to push back and talk more about federalism and the Tenth Amendment, and that's why this movement of convention of states has so much momentum. States are now seeing that what the federal government has been doing and the money that comes along with it, it is not worth it, and it's actually hurting the people. Again, I want to remind people, Senator DeMint, a senior advisor to Citizens for Self-Governance, has this video out as of yesterday at Prague University, How the States Can Save America. And you're, you're leading uh, this charge, and you say there's momentum. So give me an example of, of how this is catching on. Well, in the last couple of years, we've, we've got sta 12 states that have approved this, so we're a third of the way there. We've got about 3 million people who signed up to, to be volunteers to help with this effort, and we think it'll be close to 20 million in, over the next couple of years. But our hope is to get to 34 in the ne next two years. We've got about 20 states that are considering it in some fashion this year, and I'm convinced once we get over the 20 mark, you're going to see a lot more national attention and opposition. Um, Hillary Clinton has already come out against it. Uh, you've seen a lot of George Soros groups sign a petition together. Uh, and, and their whole point is they're going to lose 100 years of progressive progress if we begin to devolve power and money out of Washington. Right. I would just characterize it as progressive regress, but nevertheless. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, exactly. I, yeah, we shouldn't yeah. let them have that word. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Listen, I'm going to stay in touch with you on this. I think it's extremely significant. This, again, uh, the whole point of America was that the individual and his community be strong, not the state. This was the, This is the moral dream of our country. Yeah. So you're it's, doing it, it, it's what works, Dennis. We're 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 built from the ground up. And, That's right. Uh, yeah, Adam, Adam Smith said it in The Wealth of Nations. When all these individuals work together for their own interest and their community's interest, it builds a stronger country than we can build it from the top down. And we've seen the results of that. And so this is very consistent with the American principles of 
of limited government and free people. So I look forward to staying in touch with you as well and keeping you apprised of the progress. You certainly will. And congratulations on the video. A million in one day is not bad. Well, my God. Thank you. Uh, thank <laughs> yes, you, you're welcome. You're welcome and thank you. So do see the video, How These States Can Save America. Sign the petition at cosaction.com and get as many of your friends and family to do the same. With your full address, your state legislators will know that you really are their constituents in their district. Our success depends on you. So we're inviting you to be part of history. Let's invoke the constitutional solution that's as big as the problem.